Okay, I'm mixing up this glaze here and I want to get it into the proper consistency for glazing pottery. And I've used the recommended amount of water and powder to hopefully get it at the right specific gravity. And I've been letting it sit there for a minute, but we can see already that it's settling out. And so and it seems very watery. So what am I going to do about this? Well, the first thing I've got to do, you'll notice that it has those white specks of elastinite in it, so I've got to screen it. So I'm going to do that. Okay, I think I have it stirred enough so that's not on the bottom. So we'll pour it into my onto my screen here. And you can see right away on the screen there those particles, and that's from the elastinite that agglomerates. I could use a rubber scraper to put it through the screen, but I find that a brush like this works better. And you'll notice it's very watery. So you're wondering, how am I going to get the water out of there? Okay, that went through nice. Now I'll be back in a minute. Now I've got the glaze back into my bucket again. I finished screening it and I've got my mixer here ready to go and I'm finding that as soon as I stop mixing it settles to the bottom very quickly. Now the first thing I need to do before going any further is I need to know what the specific gravity of this glaze is. And the specific gravity means how heavy is it compared to water. And I've got a graduated cylinder here and that black line that if I fill it up to that line, I'm going to have 100 grams of water. So if I fill the glaze up to that line and divide it by the water, I'll know the specific gravity. But I can just weigh it, and it'll read right out on the, on the, on the display. So if that weighs 150, let's say, that means it would be 150 divided by 100, or a specific gravity of 1.5. Okay, so let's put some glaze into that graduated cylinder. fill it up to that line. One point four nine. So you're not going to believe this, but I do not have enough water in here. So I have to add water. Now you're going to think this is crazy, but bear with me. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put maybe two of those, and I'll stir it up, now you probably know where I'm going with this, I'm going to be adding vinegar to gel this, but I don't want to add the vinegar until the specific gravity is right, and you'll find out why that is in a minute. Make sure that's counterbalanced. And then we'll do the specific gravity again. One point four five. That's what I want. Okay, we've got it. Now, if I was to dip a pot in this, it would be impossible. I would get an incredibly thin layer. It would be running. It's literally impossible to use. But it's not settled yet. Okay, I've got my vinegar here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cap of vinegar and keep doing that until I see a change in the way it in the way that it's flowing under the mixer. Now you can see the difference. 
turn the mixer on and I'll wait till it stops. One, two, three, so about three and a half sec three seconds. But watch again, when it stops, it'll bounce back. Watch those bubbles. One, two, three, bounce back. But I would like to have it around two. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit more vinegar in. One, two, and a bounce back. Perfect. Now that bounce back is called a thixotropy. And that is what makes the glaze gel after I apply it to a piece of pottery. That, so it's not going to drip, it's going to stay right there. So let's try, I've got a glazed pot here someplace, or a bisque pot. There it is. Now the interesting thing about this as well is it's no longer going to settle. Now if I would have left it at 1.49 specific gravity and I would have put this vinegar in here, I could have gotten the bounce back, but it would have been too thick. It would have stopped. It wouldn't have had the two second flow that I'm getting now. So I need to have the flow. It needs to be liquid when it's moving, but when it stops, it needs to gel. And so I need to have the specific gravity at the right point for that to happen. And for this glaze, that is about 1.45. And this glaze has about 20% kaolin and about 25-30% frit. If there was no frit, it might be 1.42, 1.40. If there was a lot of frit, I might have to go to 1.5 specific gravity to get this gelling to do what I want it to do. And again, that's called thixotropy. And mayonnaise does this. It's liquid when it's moving, but when it stops, it gels. Now, let's Let's push this cup in there and watch this. Pull it out. Okay, it's dripping a little bit more than I wanted on the rim there. You see that? So I need a little bit more vinegar. I was actually at about two and a half, three seconds. So I need to add enough maybe, maybe to get it down to about two seconds. And then when I pull that mug out of there, there's not going to be one drip on there. And the beauty of this, it doesn't really matter what temperature that mug is bisked at. It doesn't even need to be bisque. It could be a dry mug. Or it could be bisque fired at cone 6 or 10. No matter what it is, when I push it in there, the gelling behavior of that glaze is going to make it hang on to that piece and it's not going to drip. 